Welcome back to the OBS Super User Guidebook and now we're talking about graphics and plugins to enhance the graphics of OBS starting with animated lower thirds. Let's take a look. So real quick, just want to remind everybody the OBS Super User Guidebook is available for free. You can download it at the link below. You can also get a paperback copy on Amazon. If you'd like us to make more videos like this, hit the like button. And I wanted to remind you if you're new here or you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button. We're trying to make this channel better. You won't become a video production expert overnight, but together we're going to learn so much in the next few years. So we'd love to have you. Only 10% of our viewers are actually subscribed, so it makes a big difference. And if we can do anything better or you have any questions along the way, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to reply. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is download the plugin. This plugin is available right off the OBS forums. The interesting thing is there's no Mac version, there is no Windows version because it's all cross-platform for this plugin for OBS is designed to be browser based. So it will work for any platform. So let's go ahead and copy it. And what we're gonna do is we are going to locate the OBS folder, OBS Studio, and we're gonna go into plugins, 64 bit, which is what we're using here. And you can see we've already got the animated lower thirds plugin in here. Now inside these files, what you're gonna find is we have a browser source HTML and a control panel HTML. And we also have a script which will enable hotkeys, the capability to trigger your animated lower thirds with hotkeys right here. So we're gonna need access to all of these. Let's go ahead and just open up the browser source and the control panel so we can take a peek at what these look like. So the control panel right here and the browser source are what we're going to bring into OBS to make this all functional. So I'm going to copy and paste the location of this file, and I'm going to bring it into OBS using the view docs option. I'm going to click the custom browser docs, and I'm going to type in lower thirds controller in here, and I'm going to click OK and hit apply. Now this is going to give me my lower thirds controller right here. It takes a second to load in. And I'm going to hit apply, close. And now I've got this nice little lower third controller. You can see you can have four lower third management areas here. And then there's a main settings area. The main settings allow you to decide how quickly something is going to become come in and out. And that's the animation. How quickly do you want the animation to come in and out? How long would you like the lower third to remain active? And then how long would you like it to remain inactive and there's some defaults already set up here so just so you know it's going to be a four second transition by default the lower third is going to stay up for 25 seconds and then it will come down for 420 seconds and it will do that on a loop so just so you can kind of take a look at this let's just say you know paul richards and we'll say chief streaming officer as our lower third and we're going to click one and what that does is it saves that information into your first lower third and it loads it into channel one because this whole lower third can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different pieces of information loaded into it. So we can't show this right now. Even if we click these little toggle on buttons, nothing's going to happen because we need to add the lower third into the scene. And the way to do that is to take this browser source right here, this, um, address that we originally got from the control panel and the browser source there. We're going to take the HTML for the browser source and we're going to add it as a browser source into here, paste the URL. This is a local file so we can actually browse for it. That's one way to find it, which is fine by me. We can come in here and go to OBS Studio, go to plugins, 64 bit animated lower thirds, and there is our browser. Now we're gonna change the width to 1920 by 1080, so it fits in perfectly there. We do not need the custom CSS. We will shut down source when not visible, and we will refresh browser when scene becomes active. All right, now that we have done that, we can come in here and see what's happening. So these two little countdown timers here, what it does is it counts up to the in and out. So there's a four second transition and it comes in and out. So as we turn this off and on, you'll see that's kind of like your on off button. 
So we click on, lower third appears. And then there's this little counter here that is giving you an idea of what's going on. Now, as you're just getting started, there's this tool tips for stored content. This is in the appearances area. This, this actually helps you kind of hover over things and see what's going on. But you can see here right now, it's remaining active for 25 seconds. And then when that timer hits 25, it goes away. And the second timer starts to count up to 420 seconds. Now we can change this, of course. So we could have the animation come in a little faster by choosing three seconds. We could have it remain active for 30 seconds and then have it remain inactive for only 10 seconds. And now we've affected the counters and the amount of time it's going to take for each one of these uh, lower thirds to come in and out. And that's normal because generally you want your lower third to come in and then you want your lower third to come out. And that's why the part of the animation process. Now, if you turn that to zero, then there's no, you remove the in and out animation and it just comes right up. But for example, uh, once this hits 30, it's gonna come back and again, it's going to remain inactive for 10 seconds and then come back for another 30 seconds. That's the way we have it set up now. What a lot of people like to do, and of course, if you hit this big button here, it's going to choose an image. You've got some like r regular, just stock images here, of course, that we can use. And then you can, of course, put your own logos in here. That's kind of the idea. Now, what we could do just to, to say, you know, now we'll, now we'll do Joe Rogan as a second option. And he is the podcast host. When we click number two, what we've done is we've loaded that information into number two. So number one is Paul Richards and number two is Joe Rogan. And what will happen is, is that it will just keep going in this rotation down your list. So in 10 seconds, now the next one's going to come up. That's Joe Rogan. This is helpful in a lot of different live streaming shows. If you want to show a Twitter live, a Twitter handle, then maybe you want to show another message. And you can have these messages coming up throughout your live stream as long as you have this lower third enabled. When it's gone, it goes away. Now let's take a look a little bit more at some of these settings. Now one of the great things you can do is you can set up your default logos. So you can come in here and make sure that you have a default logo. There we go. So now when we show that lower third, we've got our logo. So you can have your default logos, which makes setup easier. The other thing you can do is you can add custom fonts. And I want to show you how to add your own custom font. What we're going to do is we're going to go to fonts.google.com and we're going to look for a font that we like. This one is actually pretty cool. I don't know how good that would look. Let, let, let's choose this. Let's see, find a cool font. All right, let's try Oswald. That's a popular one. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the style that we want. And over here, we get the information we need to import this in. So if we hit the import button, we can import, copy and paste this information into OBS. There's an import option, and then there is the family font styles right here. So copy and paste these two into the main settings of your lower third controller and click plus. And now we've got Oswald. Boom, click plus. Now these custom fonts are going to start showing up. So let's go into our lower third controller here and let's choose the plus button. And the plus button allows you to start getting into the, the deeper details of this. So you can see here we can make things capital, bold, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to choose the Machi Pop. You can see we've got that cool font. And then we can come in here and we can do a quite a few different things. We can, uh, you can see that by default, it's going to be coming in and, and coming out as you're trying to edit it. So what I would recommend is just kind of removing the inactive option while you're editing. So it just stays out there for you. So uh, the first thing you'll notice is that there's different options for the entire layout of your lower thirds. As we click this up button here and as you hover over, it'll show you what it is because we went into the appearances and added the tooltips. So we're seeing what these do. You can see here's another one here. This is a, another lower third option. We've got quite a few different ones here for editing the style. And then we have the ability to change the size. We can make it bigger. 
We have the ability to change the horizontal and vertical positioning of where it is in your live stream. So that's an, obviously an important one. This one here changes the ratio of the text. So whether you want the top or the bottom text to be bigger or smaller than the other. The next one chooses changes the spacing in between the text. Of course, you can change the font. Now you can see we're not getting any um, picture here because this lower third doesn't have a picture yet because you can toggle the picture on and off. We also have the ability to show and hide shadows. So shadows can make it easier to see. I think that's significantly making things easier to see for sure. We can choose the background color of the bar. It's that cool kind of color of your brand potentially there. We can choose the background color of the entire uh, color of the uh, text. And then there's the color two here, which is the background color of the entire you know, bar there. And it does show live. So it's got a pretty cool looking color there. That's cycling through one and two. It's actually that easy. And each one can have its own logo. And then you can keep going through and adding or removing more of these. So we can go through and refresh and that's how it pretty much works. You can also create custom in and out times for each lower third. So you have your global setting and you can have your custom settings. So you can decide whether you want to use these global settings or if you want each one of these to do differently. So you've got up to four of these and each one can have nine panels of, of information. You can use as many as you'd like. And it's really that easy to set up and use. Animated lower thirds are a great way to manage information that you're showing in the lower third of your OBS video productions. I'm a big fan of all of the different customizations that are available in this plugin. It's pretty well designed. It's totally animated. It's easy to use. It's in a dockable area right inside your OBS production. You know, you can store multiple speakers' names. So if you're producing a virtual event or having guests on, you can manage their lower third. So I'm a big fan. I really like it. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and we'll move to our next plugin, which is actually called Move Transitions. So I'll see you in the next video.